Good wonderful morning. Welcome back to the channel of this I boss. And yes, we are back here in my bathroom. We're just here to check on the chicks. We're gonna head outside because we have some things out there to uh, look at and to talk about. Also, stay tuned in this video to the end because I'm gonna show you guys how I make some extra money. Um, here on the homestead slash firewood business. It's going to be interesting. We're going to do some talking. We're going to do a little bit of learning. All right, guys, stay tuned. Let's go check on our chicks. All right, there they are. Cute as a button and growing like a weed. Um, last video that I shot of these guys was about two days ago. And if you look closely, let's see if I don't freak them out. And get a little bit closer, you can see that they're starting to get their uh, big girl feathers on their wings. Hi, chick chicks. Hi, chick chicks. And they are cute as a button. And still a little bit scared of us, but they'll get used to us. All right, guys. And that long... We're going to be outside. We're going to be uh, looking at a few things, talking about the mystery project, and then I'm going to show you guys how to make some nice extra money on the side. Something I've never seen anybody else do on YouTube, so it'll be an exclusive. All right, stay tuned. All right, guys, welcome to being outside. I am joined by the fabulous Scout Dog right there. And we're just doing our little morning walk around and thought this would be a perfect time to look at stuff and things. So this is the beginning of the firewood stand. Uh, I'll put a link down in the description if I remember it to uh, some guys that have built almost this exact same thing. So I'm copying them. Um, basically, you're going to have little bays that are two-sided. So... We'll have some loose wood, some bundles, and we're also going to have the product that I'm going to show you guys in this video how to make. So, I think you're going to like it. Stay tuned. So, that's it. Uh, I'm building these little rafters. Uh, the other fellas put pallets on the top, and I didn't like how that looks, so we're going with these little 2x4 rafters. And uh, we're going to talk about that wood too. But let's look at the the blue turdmobile, I guess. Yeah, I haven't named it yet. So this is the new wood hauler daily driver. There you can see I have a little bit of wood, a uh, little wood debris. So I built this headache bar um, this weekend. This was actually an old hospital bed. And uh, the expanded metal I had, so threw this together. It took me took me longer than I thought it would. It took me a whole day. So let's get a look at the body. She is uh, rusty, and you can see that I have the big uh, BF Goodriches on it that were on the green turnmobile. She is rusty, but she runs really well. Um, this is my daily driver. I have currently retired the Tahoe. She sits there. I may sell the Tahoe. And Scout's going to pee because that's what dogs do. This uh, model of Chevy, I think it was 03 to 09 maybe? No, can't be that long. 05. They made the cat eyes something in those year years. So, good wood hauler. She seems to be doing well. I've been driving it now for about a month and uh, haven't had any issues since I fixed originally what was wrong with it. Check it out. And no, those aren't the greatest welds uh, by far. Not even my best welds. Alright, so topic number Two. This is going to be the mystery thing that I've been talking about in the last couple of videos that I want you guys to um, tell me what I'm going to use it for. Make your best guesses. So here she is. This is a Ford Industrial Generator currently, but it's not going to be used as a generator. It's a 
240 cubic inch straight six. There's the tag on it if anybody cares. Industrial powered engine, Ford Industrial, already welded up on a skid. So, I will tell you, <coughs> pardon me, I will tell you that the generator portion is going to come off. I do need a generator around here, but probably not quite that much. I think that would run a small city. Not quite, but it's pretty beefy. Um, so far, what I've done to is pulled out all the spark plugs because the motor did turn, but it was very tight. I uh, put some uh, oil in it, some motor oil, uh, some PV blaster, and some mystery oil. And uh, let it soak for a couple minutes, and then... <coughs> oh, pardon me. And then she started turning over freely. So, there you can see the, the wrench that I was turning it over with. Come here, big dog. Come on. And my son's mess, my stepson's, working on his motorcycle and leaving all my tools laying everywhere. That's what kids do. Here's the other side of the engine. So this came from Donnie as a little free gift. You guys can check that all out. Hi, chickens. Scout, no chicken getting. There is the tag on the generator. So there we go. In the comments, make a guess what I want to do with that motor, if we can get it to run. Uh, currently, the starter is missing, so we're going to have to acquire a starter. Oh, uh, I'll show you what the headache was made out of. Basically, I took one of these and salvaged all the metal out of it to everything but the expanded metal to make that headache for the back of the blue truck. There's the green turbmobile over there with a bit of wood in it still. Also, we acquired a go-kart and have not had time to fuss with it, but Little Boss is wanting me to fuss with it and get it running. Scout's inspecting it. Uh, there you go. That also came from my friend Donnie. So, the barn project that I talked about in the last video. Now he's peeing, bro. Why you gotta pee all over the joint? This is some of the wood out of it. It's, uh, it's in kind of tough shape, but you know what? It's great for doing projects like the roadside stand. And also, we're getting some scrap metal off of it. And that will make good roofing for the roadside stand. And there are the ducks. Everybody's free range now. They don't go very far. They stay pretty close. Once in a while the chickens will cross the street, which I don't care for. And they'll uh, go over to the neighbors and I'll have to go over and shoo them back home. Alright, so... The moment you've been waiting for, we're going to talk about how to make some money. I'm going to put Scout in the house and be right back out, and we're going to talk about it. See you in a sec. All right, guys, gals, welcome back. So, we're out in my woods, and uh, I'm going to show you something, how to make some money. This is important because the species of wood is important. This is a shag bark hickory that I cut down all oh, probably a month ago now. And I'll show you why I cut it down. Former landowner did this to a bunch of the trees. It's called girdling, and it's an attempt to kill the tree and uh, save it for standing dead firewood. <coughs> Pardon me. Well, it wasn't very successful. As you can see, this has little green shoots growing on it. So the tree is not dead, but it's going to die. So I went ahead and took this one down here. And eventually I'll fall this twin here. But not anytime soon. Now we need to walk up to uh, carport. I call it the shop area. While we're going, we'll talk a little bit. So, in business, um, 
we need to talk about commodities. And this is a good business opportunity for you guys and gals who want to try something, not work for the man. You know, way to make some money on your farmstead, homestead, firewood business. I haven't ever seen anybody do this on YouTube yet. So when you're me, my brain, the way it works, is I think a lot. Sometimes I have good ideas, sometimes I have horrible ideas. <laughs> and I've tried a lot of both. This one seems to be working very well. Very well indeed. So, let me show you what I got going on. Oh, we were talking about commodities. Circle back around to that. So, I'll put the same analogy I use on my family. Would you rather have a barrel of crude oil or, hi ducks, a barrel of gasoline? Which would you rather have? Well, <laughs> 9 out of 10 people would pick the, ga the barrel of gasoline because you know what? They can use it. It's been refined. So this little trick is all about refining. Let me show you something here really quick. So the money is always in the refinement, guys and gals. So this piece of wood, these pieces of wood, are not as valuable as these pieces of wood because they've been split. It's refinement. Obviously, every time you can add refinement in value to your firewood, you're making more and more money. This is my bundle wood right here. Let's compare this to my normal wood. This wood right here is the exact same species. It's all ash. Fine. Look at all about refinement. It's a lot smaller. It's light. Children can pick it up. Adults can pick it up. Elderly folks can pick it up and move it around. It's light. Adds value. So, being me and thinking way too much, probably why I don't sleep very much, because my brain's too active, I went from this idea of adding value small finely split firewood packaged in a, be a beautiful package to let's offer firewood <laughs> and we're gonna relabel it we're gonna call it smoking wood so species is very important first of all I have a birds that are living in my carport shop area <laughs> that's what that weird noise was if you pick it up so, what I do is go out in the woods. This is some pig nut hickory right here. I cut them into cookies, about an inch, two inches thick. And I made this little station. Just an old oil drum, piece of big ash that I cut, and uh, a hatchet. So, assuming that you own a chainsaw, a hatchet, a place to chop, you're in business. Let me show you how we do this. Beginning Dan. <laughs> okay, so I take my old feed bags. This one's got, sorry about that. This one's got cherry in it. This one's got hickory. Let me show you how we do this. See if I can get you set up somewhere where you can see half decent too. I got the mini tripod out. Um, let's see, need something kind of up high. All right, guys and gals. So we have our cookie here. Uh, we have our big piece of ash. I took some four by fours and put them around the edge. And all I do is whack this up. Like so. Set my big piece to the side. Hope you all can see it pretty well. And it's about processing. I put 
put these in my bag. Rinse and repeat, right? Don't stop watching the video yet because there's more very crucial uh, information if you're interested in doing this. So we're just going to process up a little bit. See, I can go pretty fast with it. Don't take too much of my time. I figured it out. And between the time in the woods and fuel and uh, some other accessories we're going to get to in a minute, I make about $20 an hour doing this. It's not bad. I can fill one of these bags in about... I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. But that isn't the end of the story. <coughs> so, this is just plain pig nut hickory that came off of firewood for mission. And you saw back in my woods that I have some uh, shake bark hickory there ready to go. Same process go back and cut it into cookies and uh, split it up nice and fine like this we'll do this whole piece and then we'll move on to the next step it's a little repetitive but you know I enjoy being outside and you know working with my hands and you know what if I have a rain day I can move everything underneath the carport there, and uh, this is a great way to get outside and uh, get some work done, make some extra money. I actually need to pre-make a bunch of these to have ready to go, because you don't know when an order is going to come in. Currently, I have this product in four retail locations. And if you're paying attention to Facebook, which you should join, my group, you probably have already seen this. Although I'm not sure I've put anything up yet. Not 100% sure. Now that we have the high speed internet, I would look for a lot more videos coming your way. <laughs> so stay tuned. They don't have to be ridiculously small. We're not making wood chips. We're making chunk. Alright. How long did that take? It took me longer to set your camera up than it did to uh to uh, split that one piece up and that was a decent size brown so next we're gonna head over to the tailgate of the pickup and drop the tailgate hey I'm excited this truck has a tailgate Now, if you guys who are clever can think of a way to do this process quicker and easier and want to share, please let me know down in the comments. A lot of smart people out there. Next, we're getting these. And we need to get it out of the feed bag and in the, into its packaging. I have some right here and we're gonna get the camera set up and we're gonna make up a bag so this right here is my bag I did order these off Amazon could not source them locally at least I haven't found them yet that's the whole thing everything is local I don't sell outside my county Everything's within five or ten miles of me. Some even closer than that. Uh, even my tags are made locally. 
That's what these are. I'm going to set you all up. And get you all to stay there. There you go. I think y'all can see there. So let me get in this little Ziploc bag and we'll talk about marketing. Very important part of business. So since we're messing with hickory, I'm going to need some tags that say hickory. Those are cherry. That's another product we offer. Those are my business cards. I don't need those. Hickory. We're going to just take out one tag. Get these guys back. And I need something to cut my string with. Also purchased locally. It's just twine. So, give you a look at the front part of the card. This back part has my phone number on it, so I'll just read it to you what it says. Minus the, the phone number, because I don't need you all calling me. <laughs> that could be awkward. At Boss Elite Firewood, we specialize in commercial grade bundles and smoking wood. All of our elite wood products are refined right here in Allegan, or right here in Michigan. And then, period, made in the USA, Allegan, Michigan. And I don't live in the town of Allegan. I live in the county of Allegan. So, if I have any stalkers out there. Real quick, I'm going to go get something to cut my twine with, and we're going to package one of these up so we can see what it looks like. Be right back. Okay, guys. So, I went, out of, it went to my toolbox and got me uh, a... Uh, little pair of scissors. I want about a foot of string and these things are dull but hey got the job done. Also I removed this blank white tag. Get rid of that. Put that in my pocket so it don't blow off. Then simple. Three quarters of the bag full. So it takes a couple seconds here. So let's talk about rules and regulations. If I was you guys, I would check your local and state rules on firewood. For instance, here in Michigan, we cannot move any firewood products over our state or over our county lines unless it has been FDA inspected and been kiln dried. So keep that in mind. Make sure you check on that. And also, I am good friends with one of the local shopkeepers where this product is has been uh, is being sold. Go around before you make any investments in any of the things that you see here, buying the bags, getting uh, business cards or hanging tags printed up and uh, see if you got a market before you go this way. I definitely have a market. That's about three quarters thereabouts. Excuse my nose is running like mad. It's cool this morning. It's about 39 degrees. Er, I think I'm gonna after I'm done shooting the video, I'm going to get a load of firewood and fire up the wood stove this morning. So, this has a little drawstring in it. I just tie it tight so nothing can, you know, fall out. Also, buy good material. Don't buy a bag that's going to fall apart. Uh, no one's going to like that, and you're not going to get any reorders. So, from there, 
I twist it up, take my little piece of string, and uh, get them halfway even. Don't have to be perfect. I want this to look a little rustic. And uh, tie it up. Double, whoop, double knot. Storks. Man, I'm getting all the birds flying over. And then we're going to put on our hanging tag. Like a saw. And we're almost done, guys. There's going to be some closing thoughts I'm going to have to share with you here. Things to consider. And I tie it in a bow like I'm tying my shoes. And then I double knot it like you do your kids' shoes so that they don't uh, come untied. Like so. There we go. All right. Let me uh, get you straightened around here and we'll show you this. Nice up close. Isn't that beautiful? Premium hickory smoking wood. Let's talk about money. I wholesale these at five dollars a piece and I think most of my people that I'm uh, wholesaling to are selling these between eight and ten dollars each. So good profit margin there. Now let me talk about my investment. A hundred of these bags was I think sixty dollars and then between the hanging tags and uh, my business cards all that stuff uh, think that I have these almost another hundred into that anyway when I figured it out it came out might be minus business cards too guys so bear with my brain it works out to about a dollar fifteen that I have invested into hard materials the bag the tag so, <coughs> so plenty good profit there um, the most I've sold is 20 at a time the guy that's a friend of mine uh, I take him six at a time he normally sells out every weekend but he has a big store but it's very full and I'm inventorying for him in other words I'm holding the extra inventory and he just lets me know when uh, he's running low and then I go restock his shelf for him. That's an important thing. Um, be prepared to stock the the store's shelf. Bring your product in. Um, set it up for them. Ask them where they want it. I, I always recommend to my shopkeepers um, let's put it by your charcoal. Um, it seems to work good. We sell, we're selling a lot of it. Um, it's just been really good so you know we can make and it's still early I think we're making you know 150 bucks a month extra just off this little thing everything that we've invested has been paid back it's all profit now so it's it's good I recommend it um, what I did was I made up about 10 of these I put my firewood bundles in the back. Um, I also had some little sample bags. Let me show you those really quick. These I also got off Amazon. They were really cheap, like a hundred for six bucks. Give these out to the shopkeepers if they smoke. Um, you know, cook over wood. It's a it's a no-brainer. Give them out, even if you get a no give them a sample like hey you want a sample take home try it call me back you know if you like it and uh, be dressed up don't be in your work clothes like I am be fairly dressed up fairly clean shaved um, wear a mask if that's a thing in your state or country and just go around and uh, introduce yourself pass out your business card um, explain that you're the owner operator of your business name and uh, make some sales calls and worst thing to do is say no get out of here which I didn't have that everybody listened to me pretty well and 
I got some yeses, I got some noes, I got some maybes. It's all good. So, just hang in there, be persistent, and it can grow as fast and as hard as you want it to. Make sure you're following state and local laws and regulations about firewood. Because this is just firewood, guys. That's all that is, is firewood. Refined, processed. That's where the value is. So, let me show you something. These guys right here, this is $3.50, what I wholesale them for. That's $5 wholesale. It's all about refinement. And it doesn't matter what business you're in, refinement. <laughs> Make um, your product more valuable. Add value to your product and you will be successful because there's a market there's a market out there you just have to look be persistent make sure it's a viable market though that you can you can grow and um, make money on anyways guys i think that's going to wrap it up this is going to be a pretty cool video hope you guys have learned something um, again put in the comments what you think that ford industrial engine is going to be used for I'll give you a hint it is wood related <laughs> everything's wood related around here right so yeah just uh you know comment hit that subscribe button all the fun stuff and i'll see you again in the next video till then boss is out